Andrew, congratulations on the CDE. Thank you very much. Was it a surprise? Um, yes, in, a, in some senses, yes, because uh, uh, in my career I wouldn't have expected necessarily to get such an important honour, so I'm very pleasantly surprised by this. And um, I think it's not just obviously a reflection of what I've done, but all the people I've worked with um, over many years uh, in the various jobs that I've had. Going back to when you were studying, I guess, economics at say A-level and then going on to Clare, Clare College, was, was economics a passion of yours even then? I was very interested in economics right from the point at which I started studying it, which I'm afraid to say is as long ago as 1974. But if you go back to that time, there are all sorts of um, difficulties and problems in the economy. We had the three-day week, we had big rises in oil prices, we had the first recession that we'd had for many years after the Second World War. In some ways, there are quite a lot of parallels between that time in the mid-70s, the turbulence that we had then, and some of the recent turbulence, different, different issues, but still quite a lot coming along that took us by surprise, and that, that sort of galvanised my interest in the subject, yeah. And I guess we talk about, about economics. Has, has, has what happened, you meant you've gone back to three-day week in 74, has what happened caught you by surprise, or were there indicators at that time? Well, nobody, I think, expected, or very few people expected, a financial crisis of the scale that, that we've seen. And I think, actually, um, you know, my job up until early this year was on the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee. I think uh, the Bank of England and other authorities did a good job of stabilising the economy and pr providing the basis for some sort of recovery. But what the difficult challenge now is, is, is dealing with the aftermath of the financial crisis, some of the high levels of government borrowing, and some of the lack of confidence that people are feeling in the economy, and also the fact that inflation has turned out a lot higher, and all those issues are pointing in different directions to some extent. It, it, we talk about the very first parts of the re recession. The description, I believe, that some of Alistair Darling gave of, of hours, hours until the cash machines closed down, was, was that accurate? Well, there were clearly situations where policymakers needed to act promptly and quickly, and I was very conscious of that in the Bank of England. And I think in the area that I was operating, we were setting interest rates, we made some of the biggest cuts in interest rates that we've seen, and we injected money into the economy. Um, and I think we've seen in, in the Euro area how if you delay and, and to some extent don't take those decisions quickly, the problems start to mount up and the confidence um, evaporates. So, it was very important to do things quickly, um, and I think that's, that what ha that's what happened in late 2008 and early 2009. So your job at the Bank of England, day to day, how, how would you describe that? Well, um, I was an external member of the Monetary Policy Committee. Um, there are four external members out of a committee of nine, and they are brought in, uh, they're part of the committee to, be, uh, to bring their experience to bear from their previous roles. And I had worked in the business world, particularly for British Airways in the nine preceding years. Um, and so we're bringing a different perspective from some of the other people on the committee who might be sort of more regular employees of the Bank of England. It was not something that took up the whole of your time, but it had to be the bulk of your time. Um, and it wasn't just a matter of just turning up uh, once a month to decide what happened to the interest rates. There's a lot of research representing uh, the, the committee, travelling around the country, visiting local businesses. And I visited quite a few businesses in the Thurrock area. Uh, during the time that I was on the committee as well. Uh, for, for example, was it people like Port of Tilbury and organisations like that? Or? Yes, I visited um, Port of Tilbury and various uh, of the uh, businesses that are based down there. Uh, visited a company, well not, not in Thurrock but in Basildon. Visited Corriton Oil Refinery. Uh, talked to the people who are doing the new Shellhaven uh, port development. So yes, it, it was uh, a matter of getting around and trying to not just look at the figures on the economy, but also find out from people who are working in business in particular what was happening in the economy. So going back to, uh, you know, we don't want to concentrate on the Bank of England, so when you're working at British Airways, what, what was your primary function there? Well, I was the chief economist uh, for British Airways, so I was responsible for giving them views on what was happening in all the markets that they operate in. And British Airways is a global business, so it was a matter of understanding what was going on in, in the international economy. But I also expanded my role into um, environmental issues. I headed up their environmental area and also in helping them in their discussions with government and with regulators where a lot of economics came into play. Uh, so I found it was a, a fascinating job because I had a lot of different uh, responsibilities and issues to deal with. 
probably the most interesting thing I did at BA was after 9-11 when the demand for air travel and, and people's willingness to travel by air collapsed. Um, I helped uh, with a group of other managers to put together the plan, what was called the Future Size and Shape Plan for BA after 9-11 and the company gradually recovered and it was very satisfying to see that happen. Going back to Thurrock for, for a second, some people say, you know, here we are in 2012 in Thurrock and we talk about from, from DP World London Gateway across to plans for Lakeside, that it, it could, in some ways, it's different from any other area in fact, because there's all this regeneration. Do you, think, do you think that's a positive message in 2012 area in Thurrock? Well, I think I would, I would make three positive points uh, for 2012. First of all, I think the doom and gloom in the economy is being a bit overdone at the moment, and I think there is a good prospect that the economy will improve during 2012. We're going to have a difficult start, but the second half may be better. But more specific to Thurrock, I think there are two things in particular in its favour. One is it has a very diversified economy. You've got retail outlets like Lakeside, but you've also got the industrial side with the port. And you've got new developments going on. You've got energy, uh, you know, oil-related developments. So I, I think the diversification, the, the, the different number of different activities in Thurrock is a positive. The other thing is the proximity, closeness to London. London is the big international gateway for the UK economy. Um, and the international economy is probably the biggest source of growth that we'll see in the UK. Uh, looking ahead at this year. So the fact that we're located so close to that gateway for the international economy and all the international aspects that come through being part of the, the wider London economy I think is positive for Thurrock as well. Economists get, get very passionate about what they believe in, don't they? People see someone like Will Hutton on Question Time banging a table and talking about what he believes in. Have you been involved in quite over the years, quite a lot of full and frank exchange of views? Well, I've spent most of my time as a business economist working in the business world, and there I think you have to put across your arguments in a very balanced and measured way. And that's probably my style, rather than being sensational and taking a very dramatic position. Um, in my last year on the Monetary Policy Committee, I felt that uh, we needed to uh, start raising interest rates. Now, that, the, the time for that has, has passed, I think it's quite clear that that's not the right thing to do at the moment. But uh, I certainly did put across my case, perhaps, relatively forcefully then. Um, but in general, I think it's the argument that you've got to focus on, winning winning round people to your view by making a good argument rather than by sensationalising or rather emo over-emotionalising the, the case that you're putting. And, and finally, taking things back to Thurrock again, I think we've missed a trick. We should have been spotting your band at uh, various you know, North Stifford and Stanford festivals and Horn of Feast and Fair. Tell us a, bit, a little bit about the, um, the music room that we're in and your tastes. Yeah, well, um, throughout my career I've always kept an interest in music, uh, but particularly over the last five years we've we formed a band at a local church in Stifford Clays, and that band plays now in various fates and fairs around. We only do about half a dozen gigs a year. Uh, we play classic rock music, we don't play our own music, we play music from the 60s and the 70s in particular. But it, it's great if you've got a sort of quite a high profile, pressured professional job to have something else that uh, takes your attention to get involved in um, and I found that music is a great uh, activity to have as that uh, hobby in a sense uh, while I've been doing my economics career. Andrew, thank you very much. Thank you.